you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today the Xiaomi DC synthesizer which is $20 and it's really a combination of the ESP32C3 processor and the SAM2965 system on a chip synthesizer. How does it sound? Is it worth your money? If you think that's interesting please join me in this video. Here we go. So this is the hardware you get, an ESP32C3 microcontroller, the SAM2695 synth on the chip, an amplifier, a Wi-Fi antenna and four buttons. Now the default firmware lets you start a simple drum pattern and switch through the patches and play notes on the two middle buttons. You can also trigger four horrendous MIDI tracks. I understand this is an example of algorithmic music, but as this is advertised as a MIDI synthesizer, let's see what we can do to make that happen. The documentation page tells us we need the Seed Arduino MIDI Master library to get anywhere, so let's grab that first. We also need the Arduino development environment, so that's our next stop. After launching that, we need to add the ESP32 board package to our IDE, so let's follow the instructions. We can now connect the synthesizer to a computer and select the ESP32 board in the IDE. Now let's add the MIDI master library, which can be done in the library manager. Just select the zip file we downloaded earlier. Now, I could waste my time coding a simple firmware that listens to any incoming data on pin 7 and then sends that to the SAM chip, but luckily YouTuber DIY Electromusic already has done that. So let's just grab his code on GitHub, compile it and then transfer it to the synth. This really is a relatively simple endless loop as you can see down here. If you like this, please visit his channel and watch some of his videos and subscribe. So that's the software part done, but we need some additional hardware. So let's build a 5-pin MIDI socket. Apart from the synth, we'll need some wires, a 1N4148 diode, a 20 kilo ohm resistor, a 220 ohm resistor, a 6N137 octocoupler and a female 5-pin MIDI plug. We're using a breadboard for this build, which basically is a board full of connectors. Get the octocoupler and push it into the breadboard right over the middle notch so the small dot printed onto its surface is facing right. Then connect the lower left pin to the negative and the lower right pin to the positive lane. Now push the 10 kilo ohm resistor into the breadboard so it connects the second and the fourth pin on the bottom side of the octocoupler. The diode is next. Make sure the black ring is facing right. Then push it into the breadboard so it connects pin 2 to pin 3 on the upper side of the octocoupler. Then get the 220 ohm resistor and connect pin 3 of the upper side of the octocoupler to a pinhole on the right that's not connected to anything else. Then connect pin 2 on the lower side of the octocoupler to the rightmost pin on the upper row of the Xiaomi D synth. I've already sold the two wires to pins 4 and 5 in this female MIDI plug here. Now connect pin 5 of the MIDI jack to pin 2 on the upper side of the octocoupler and pin 4 on the MIDI jack to the loose end of the 220 ohm resistor. Check if all the wires are connected correctly. Here I accidentally swapped plus and minus, which was an easy fix. Now connect pin 2 of the synth to the minus lane and pin 3 to the plus lane. I'll connect the MIDI keyboard and the speaker to check if everything's working and yes, this seems fine.
Here is a close up of the wiring. Right, before we dive into CCs, NRPNs and SysX data, let's check some sounds. Here's the piano. These are simple joys, but the SAM2695, which has been around for some 10 years now, is capable of more. Let's take a look at the spec sheet. So, in this small chip, they implemented 64 voices of polyphony, three effects and even a microphone in. The paper suggests that the chip can be customized deeply using NRPNs and SysX commands, allowing you to adjust the effects, filters, assign controllers, EQ the sounds and much more. Every time something says NRPN and SysX, it's clear my Intake grid controllers are the weapon of choice. Let's take a look at filter cutter frequency, for example. The manual confronts you with this cryptic line here, so let's try to understand that and set up our controller accordingly. NRPN is an abbreviation for non-registered parameter number, which manufacturers of MIDI devices can use to implement functionality outside of the general MIDI standard. This works by sending a sequence of bytes on MIDI CC 99, 98 and 6. The first byte is called the most significant byte or MSB and the second one the least significant byte or LSB. Both numbers identify the command that the third value you send is used for. The first two columns here contain the same information basically, so let's take a look at the more complete second column. B and H tells you the following bytes are hexadecimal numbers, and we need to convert them to a decimal for use on the MIDI controller. 
63H converts to 99, the first CC number. 01H is 1, 62H is 98, 20H is 32, 06H is 6, and wee wee is the value your controller is sending when you're turning the knob. This usually is a number between 127 and 0. In the grid controller, we can add small code blocks that execute commands, and here you can see I just wrote three commands that send the numbers we just discerned. These three lines mean send on CC99 the value 1, on CC98 the value 32, and on CC6 the current fader position of this control. Some of the parameters can be controlled by SysX commands only. Let's implement a control for reverb time, for example. Just copy the SysX string found in the manual, then insert a SysX block and paste the command there. Now replace the double we by the word val and the xx by the word checksum. So the meat of a sysx command actually is very lean. Most of this string here is vendor information and markers signaling the start and the end of the sysx command. For example here, only the bytes from 40 to 29 are of interest and they carry the actual command. The third last number is the value of our control and the second last number is a checksum. If you don't provide the correct checksum, the synth will ignore your command, so let's add a local variable to our setup here. To get the checksum, add up the four numbers in decimal, in this case 64 plus 1 plus 52 plus 255, which is 372. Now let's use the modulo 128 operation on this, which results in 116. Now subtract that result from 128, which results in 12 or OC in hexadecimal. Right, now I need to change the Arduino code so it passes through SysX data as well. And now we can tweak the sounds on the synth live. This being a general MIDI synthesizer with up to 64 voices of polyphony, we can now layer some tracks as well. I'm using MPC1 as a sequencer here, which also sends all the program change commands necessary to set up the tracks. There is one drum set available on this chip, which is bound to MIDI channel 10. That's it for today, the Seed Studio Synthesizer. Summing out all the components found in this small box, I think it's roughly worth the asking price. I have to say though that selling this as a MIDI synthesizer doesn't really quite nail it, because in order to call this a synthesizer, I would have expected to have a working USB MIDI port right out of a box. And in order to pull that off, another slightly more expensive microcontroller unit instead of the ESP32 
would have been necessary. So I'd like to see the manufacturer of this board release a version 2 of this that's just plug and play for hobby musicians. And that's it. If you found this interesting, please do the YouTube thing. Seeing those subscriber number grows always makes me happy and keeps me motivated to push out a new video every Sunday. You can also support me on Patreon or become a channel member using the button under this video. As always, thanks for watching and see you again very very soon. Bye bye!